there's only like 2% chance that this is actually a coincidence and it's going to test you on something else completely different. So triangles are one of the most popular topics on the SAT and we're going to go over two things you definitely want to know before you take your next SAT. So we're going to go over the concept, how it works, and show you exactly what these questions look like on the SAT. And we're going to wrap it up by giving you a couple pointers on what you need to look out for so that you can solve these questions quickly and get a higher score for your next SAT. If it's your first time here, my name is John. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 11 years, and my specialty is taking a student who's currently in 4, 5, 600 range to 700 plus by their next SAT through a six week online program, SAT Math Accelerator. And literally, all we do is we go over the concept, show you what these questions look like, go over the question patterns, and get you ready for your next exam. So, guys, we're going to first start off with the concept and then apply it to this easy, simple question. And then we're going to work our way up to the level five difficulty questions. And I'm going to share some insights with you. And everything we're going to talk about is going to be nicely organized into this. PDF right here, which I highly recommend you download and print out and try these questions with me and maybe take some notes on the way because that's how you get better on the SAT by trying out these questions yourself rather than watching a stranger solve it on YouTube. So I'm going to link in the pinned comment down below, but let's start off with this first concept right here. So what do we need to know about triangles for the SAT? The first thing is going to be that there is a direct relationship between angle and the opposite side in a triangle. What do I mean by that? Well, if you think about a equilateral triangle, it's a triangle with all three same side length and three same angle measurements. So let's first start off with a right triangle. We have learned that the hypotenuse is going to be the longest side length within a right triangle. Why is that? Because it's opposite from the biggest angle inside a triangle. Within a triangle, there is a direct relationship, meaning the bigger the angle, the longer opposite side length. As the angle gets bigger, the side gets longer. And if it gets smaller, it's going to get shorter. And if you think about a equilateral triangle where all three side lengths are going to be the same, that's because all three angles are going to be the same measure. So the opposite side lengths are also going to be same length as well. So the key takeaway is that the bigger the angle, the longer the opposite side length. Okay, so this is how it's going to show up on the SAT. The question says, give the angles in the triangle, which the following correctly represents the relationship among the side length, right? So we have this triangle right here. We have 65, 30, which means the third side length is going to be 180 minus 65 minus 30, which is going to be just 85, which means this angle over here is going to be 85. And in order for us to find the relationship among the side lengths to see which one's the longest and which one's the shortest, all we have to do is apply the logic of there's a relationship between angle and the opposite side. So we know that B is opposite from the long biggest angle. So we know that B is going to be having the longest length. Right. The next biggest or next longest is going to be 65, which is going to be A. So we know A is going to be the second longest and opposite from the smallest angle, C is going to be the shortest length. And if we put it all together, our answer is going to be choice B. And what you have to understand is that SAT has a lot of these questions where you either you know it or you don't. And the deciding factor is going to be whether you know the concept or not. That's why it's so important for you to understand the 25 concepts that are tested on the SAT. Anyways, that was the first concept. Now let's go over the second concept you need to know, which kind of nicely ties in with the first concept. And special triangles is going to be the second concept. And it's one of the most popular triangle questions you need to know for the SAT. And when it comes to these questions, what you need to understand is that special right triangles, there are two types. There are the 30, 60, 90 triangles and 45, 45, 90 triangles. Pretty sure you have heard of them in high school. Maybe you forgot most of them like I did back in high school. For the SAT, you just kind of relearn everything. It's just part of the drill. And what you want to know for these are going to be the angles and the side length ratio. So whenever you're working with a 30, 60, 90 triangle, there's going to be a side length ratio of X, X root three and two X. And for 45, it's going to be X, X and X root two. You definitely want to memorize them in your head because even though SAT is going to give it to you on the first page or the first screen of the SAT, you don't want to waste your time going back and forth between the formulas. It's just, it's just not the best use of your time. And more importantly, you want to understand that each side length ratio is specifically tied to certain angles. X is going with 30, 60 is going with X root three, and then 90 is going with two X. In the past, SAT has been very clever where they said, oh, this figure over here, it looks like a 30 here and it looks like a 60 over here, but the figure is actually not drawn to scale. So we're gonna say this is going to be 30 right there and that's gonna be 60 right there. And that messed up a lot of students. So you wanna be a step ahead of the SAT and recognize these connections. And it's really easy to remember if you kind of tie into the first concept we have learned, which is there's going to be a direct 
relationship between angle and the opposite side. So if we erase this all over here, if you look at X, this is opposite from 30, right? And if you look at X root 3, it's opposite from 60, right? Root 3 is about 1.7. So it's going to be 1.7x over here, and it's just going to be 1x over there. So it makes sense that 1x is opposite from a smaller angle, and 1.7x is opposite from a bigger angle. Isn't that pretty cool? Oh, you don't think so? All right, whatever. All right, let's move on. So if you look at a 45, 45, 90 triangle, they have the same measure. So the opposite side length are also going to be the same. And opposite from 90 is going to be x root 2, which is going to be about 1.4. So that makes sense. 1x, 1x, and opposite from the bigger angle 1.4x all makes sense so guys knowing the side length ratios is like the bare minimum for these types of questions but one thing you want to certainly start doing is that whenever you're working with right triangles right and if you start seeing these 30 degrees 45 60 degrees chances are the question is testing you on special right triangles it is not a coincidence that you are going to see 30 degrees or 60 degrees in a right triangle or a 45 degrees in a right triangle if you do there's like 98 percent chance that it's testing you on special right triangles and you want to start with that it's like a hint that college board is giving you and on top of the angles you want to look out for radical three or radical two in a special right triangle if there are again it's a sign that it's testing you on special right triangles 98 percent of times it doesn't always work that way so let's try this question over here this is what you're going to see on the actual sat given that bdc is a right triangle so we have a bdc over here and there is going to be a right angle right there what's the length of cb right Okay, so the first thing I'm going to recognize is that, okay, we're going to have a right triangle over here, and I see a 60, and I see a 30 over here. Is it a coincidence? Probably not. There's only like 2% chance that this is actually a coincidence, and it's going to test you on something else completely different. I'm going to start off with special right triangles and see if it works. So if it's 60 here and 90 here, that means it's going to be 30 degrees right there. 30, 60, 90 triangle, it shares a side length ratio of x, x root 3, and then 2x. And because 2x is equal to 12 right now, which is the hypotenuse, we know that the x value is going to be just 6, which means BC over here is going to equal to 6, which means CB, our answer is going to be 6, like shown right there. So again, very simple question for explanation purposes, but when it comes to special right triangles, you want to know these two things. You want to first understand that there are specific side length ratio. You want to certainly memorize them. And two, you want to look out for certain triggers, certain SATs question patterns. And that is, if you're seeing 30, 45, or 60 in a right triangle, testing you on special right triangles. If you're seeing radical two or radical three in a geometry special triangles questions, testing you on special right triangles. So get that drilled into your head and let's move on to some little bit more difficult question. It's like a difficulty three. We're going to move on to difficulty four and five in a second, but let's take a look at this. The question says, inside a circle, a small square is drawn where its four corners are touching the circumference of the circle. Given that the circle has radius of 4 root 2, what is the perimeter of the square in inches, right? So whenever you're working with geometry question and there's like a lot of words, what you want to start doing is you want to start visualizing and draw out what the question is telling you. And off the bat, that is like 99.99% .99 is never going to be your answer choice. So don't even think about it. So we know that there is going to be what? A small square drawn inside a circle where it's touching the four four corners like so. And we know that the circle is going to have a radius of four root two. What is the perimeter of the square in inches, right? Well, if you think about a square, right? Well, we're working with a circle. So let's kind of extend out this radius and make it a diameter. And what do we see here? We see a right triangle because a square is going to have a right angle right there. And more importantly, we see a radical two, which is going to be a sign that the question is testing you on what? Special right triangle. Very good. You're catching on. So I'm going to first start with that and see where it takes us. If it works, great. If not, we'll try something else, but that's going to be our starting point. So we know that a square is going to be what? It's going to be 90 degree here and 90 degree here. And if we draw a diagonal across it, it's going to split the angle into even 45s. And now what do we have? We have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. We have a 45, 45, 90 triangle right there. And we know that for that triangle, the side length ratio is going to be what? X x and x root 2 which means this length over here is going to be what it's going to be 8 root 2 and our 8 root 2 is going to be same thing as x root 2 so 8 root 2 is equal to x root 2 what is our x going to be it's just going to be 8 so our x is equal to 8 which means it's going to be 8 here it's going to be 8 here it's going to be 8 here 8 here 8 here 8 here there's going to be four sides so 8 times 4 is equal to 32 that's going to be our perimeter if you have any question leave it down below but the main takeaway here guys is this is essentially how 
how SAT works. You learn the concepts and you piece everything together and then apply to the questions. That's SAT in a nutshell. And that's how you get a perfect score on the math section. And that's what we do inside the accelerator program. We do the concepts, we do the question patterns and we piece everything together and get you ready for the next exam. So if you want to learn more, go to the pinned comment down below and check out SAT Math Accelerator to go through this process for every single concept that is tested on the SAT. Check out the next video and let's do some hard questions.